Hi, my name is Swan. I'm a PhD student in Material Science Engineering at the University of Virginia, and this is my lab. In order to reduce carbon footprint or ensuring that we could satisfy the increasing energy demand, we want to implement new power generation system. Now, nuclear is an option. Nuclear energy started from Generation 1, which is water-based reactor, to Generation 4, which is non-water-based reactor that utilizes molten salt or liquid metal for cooling or nuclear fission. Generation 4 reactors started about 1950s as a part of the aircraft nuclear experiments. During that period, we wanted to develop modular molten salt reactor for nuclear submarines. Since then, for about 70 years, we saw a lot more interest coming in from civilian laboratories. But a lot of research being done in the present right now are what we call post-forensic studies. In other words, they expose the metals, they take a look at it after corrosion. It doesn't really give us any instantaneous real-time information. Now, from a corrosion science point of view, in order to understand degradation and corrosion of materials from a fundamental point of view, we have to understand what is happening to the metal real-time in the molten salt reactor. This is what we want to use electrochemistry to bridge the knowledge gap and will be what my presentation is about. A key knowledge gap we observe is the lack of fundamental research and insights despite substantial reports. As a result, we are not able to answer basic questions such as what are the rate determining steps for corrosion and how would it be influenced. Therefore, the objective of my work is to develop a mechanistic understanding on corrosion process for Gen4 nuclear reactor application. Here is the instrument that I developed to perform electrochemical testing in molten fluoride systems. Uh, they are all conducted in a glove box environment, and the picture on the right shows the picture of the molten salts. For my materials, I selected pure chromium because it is an alloying element present in most structural alloys for MSR. My electrolyte is a fluoride eutectic salt mixture called Flanac, and the preparation step is listed here. My approach here is to perform and elaborate on potential dynamic polarization plot. So, when corrosion is happening, there are a couple of factors that underline this process, such as the oxidizer, interfacial reaction to corrosion that solution process, and also microstructure can play a role. But regardless of which are the rate regulating factors, when corrosion happens, it is underlined by an open circuit potential, which is a marker for driving force. So in electrochemistry, we will apply a potential relative to this marker for driving force, and we would receive a current response. So potential is our driving force and current is the resultant reactivity. Using this method here shows the current potential relationships of chromium in molten flanic salts at 600 degrees Celsius. You can actually see there are three different regimes. The first being cathodic regime, the orange curve, signaturing the oxidizer's reduction. The blue curve, the charge transfer regime, shows the anodic dissolution of chromium controlled by interfacial reaction. And the green curve, which is the mass transport control regime, signatures that as we increase the driving force, the reactivity or current is not increasing, so something is regulating the reactivity in this regime. One approach for us to find out what is controlling the reaction rate is by calculating the thermodynamically favorable species at each potential. Here, the curve was shaded with different color to show the stable species, and the method we use to calculate this species is shown in this literature below. Through postmortem observations, we found that the metal surfaces exhibit a millimeter scale thin film. From X ray diffraction, we found that it is a potassium chromium fluoride compound. Therefore, from thermodynamic to XRD to post forensic analysis, we think that this salt film is the one that regulates the current reactivity as we keep increasing driving force for corrosion. To understand the microstructural significance of each of these regimes, I applied the potential of the chromium in each regime and looked at the surface morphologies afterwards. In the cathodic regimes, I do not see any corrosion now that is expected. In the charge transfer regimes, I see a very faceted surface morphologies. Now, that implies an effect of grain orientation, which I'll elaborate later. At the mass transport regimes, I saw a very smooth surface. Now, that is a signature of the solution under a salt film. The importance of illustrating morphological dependence on potential is that it predicts long-term corrosion behavior. Here, this is a surface of chromium after an accelerated testing. You can see a very faceted and a smooth surface. And when we look at the pomological map, the faceted location is higher than the smooth location. Now, it means that corrosion will first proceed through the charge transfer regime and then by mass transport regime. We have also carried out a separate studies to relate these facets to its individual grain orientation. Here is the conclusion for my work. 
Essentially, I relate driving forces to the rate limiting steps to corrosion phenomena such as grain orientation of salt film. Here is my statement on impact. And here is my acknowledgement. Feel free to contact me.